Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to To Be Determined. Today we're going to be going over the West Village section of the Rift. We are not going to go over the Mirrorverse today. I'm going to save that for another video, but everything else we are covering. So if you enjoy or learn something, be sure to leave a like and sub and let's jump straight into it. All right, so to enter the West Village, you will have to have the Supreme Time Charm, which you get from the leech and crafting it. You'll have a couple materials that you'll need. Went over this in the last video, but we'll go over it again. You're gonna need four leech Supreme Fragments, 32 lily pads, four Odonata bottles, and 24 dead hog spines to be able to craft it. And then you'll put it in your Rift Gallery, and then you'll be able to enter the West Village. Now you do need three minutes left on your Rift time to be able to enter. So you have to pay that every single time you enter the Rift. If you want to enter the West Village, here we go. There's three minutes and now we can go over and start working on the different things so the first thing you'll notice is there are shadows around here and these guys drop shadow cruxes now shadow cruxes are used to make the crux ring so you will need 16 of these to be able to upgrade your crux talisman to a crux ring but it is 10 extra rift time and an additional two until so that may not be too important now but it is very helpful later plus getting that extra crux fortune is going to be very very useful later now you'll also need eight of these to upgrade your wild boots to gunther's sneakers but you also need a Gunthasizer Lichen. So in order to get a Gunthasizer Lichen, you're going to go up to this first house and you'll see here is Gunther. And now in order to get the Gunthasizer Lichen, you'll have to do the race two times. First time, you only got to get a minute on it, so it's pretty easy. But you're going to be jumping around these rooftops and just making sure you hit all of the pressure plates. If you miss any pressure plates, then you're going to be in trouble. But what does help is that you can use the aspect of the leech to help out a little bit. So there are a couple pretty difficult jumps here, but this will help out quite a bit and for the first round again it is just a minute so just got to jump in make sure that you hit this last pressure plate instead of going down and dropping on the first one because if you drop on that first one it's going to reset your timer but you have to hit this last pressure plate to finish the race so 41 seconds is not too bad that's all you need to beat the first one but to beat the second one you need 35 seconds so it's a little bit more difficult it probably took me about a half hour to be able to beat it but that is a lot of things in the rifts that are skill based you'll need a little bit of practice but then you can handle it pretty easily next up we're going to go over the fourth montezuma soul which is on top of this house here you'll just have to swim up the waterfall and there are two little waterfalls here you have to go up both of them and then Montezuma's soul is going to be all the way up top, but you will have to make this little jump or if you have your aspect of the leech and just warp up but right here is Montezuma's soul. Next up, we've got the Enigma souls. So the first one is down here at Cosmo. You just click on him and then he'll have a little bit of dialogue. Say sure. He'll shoot you down here and then you're basically just going to have to swim around like a dolphin. You just look up. You don't even have to press space. You just got to swim through and then look up. I don't think your time really matters on this. Not really a time limit. So just as long as you get through and then just dive around. And here is the Enigma Soul right here. So make sure you grab that before you go back to Cosmo. The next one is over here in the cake house. There's actually two here at the cake house. So you'll just eat cake. You can either hold down right click or to do a little bit faster if you've got decent cps you can just bam your click and the first one is right here the second one is going to be on the second floor so it's a little bit of a challenge to get to but the stairs are over here in this right corner so if you can just manage to eat your way over there go up the stairs all the way up and then there's another right turn with a couple more stairs and then the soul is going to be all the way over here in this back corner go all the way over it's right next to this torch here and you can grab that soul. The next one is up here where you can grab the Enigma soul in between the houses. Just like the last video, you will need a larva silk line to be able to reach this one, but you'll set it just like this, go across on the line and then you can break the glass and grab the Enigma soul. Then right over here at the pizza house, you can walk over and talk to Joey McPizza here. Actually, you'll talk to the chef and he says, about time you arrive to be Joe's a world-class competitive pizza eater and is trying to break into the hot dog scene basically what you're going to want to do here is clear out your hot bar as much as you can you may want to leave your aspect of the leech but other than that doesn't matter too much say start contest and it's going to start the hot dog contest he's basically just going to throw hot dogs anywhere and everywhere you just want to go around pick up as many as you can and bring them back right click them onto Mr. Joey McPizza's plate here and I do recommend if you have a guild or anything somebody in a discord to 
get in the call with them and just grind this out because you do need 50 hot dogs and that is a little bit difficult to do as one person. It's not impossible, but if you want to do it first try, definitely having somebody with you is very helpful. But we're going to see how we do. But yeah, really clearing out your hot bar is definitely the best way to do this. If these guys stacked, it would be so much easier, but they don't, unfortunately. And we've got six seconds left. I need four. One, two, three, four. There we go. So we got to 50. And then once you get to 50, then the furnace disappears and you can grab the Enigma soul there. The next soul is actually up in the roof of the same building. And for this one, you will need two players. You cannot do it as one player. So you right click on this. You can see it's at at 2G. So we run over here, hit 2G, and I clicked the wrong button. All right, let's try it again. 1B. So we go over here and click 1B, and you click the wrong button. That's because every time that you stop clicking on this and no one's clicking on the hopper, it's going to change. So you have to have somebody holding this steady and telling you which one you need to be pressing. Now, if you have someone on this hopper who is constantly just opening this menu, then whoever's over here can open up, be like, all right, 1C, 1D, and then open up chat, type 1C, 1D. And as long as the person over here on the hopper doesn't leave this menu, then the numbers will stay the same. But after you have gotten all of these buttons correct, then this pillar will disappear here and you can grab the Enigma soul. Now the last soul is actually over here towards Cosmo behind him. There is the infested house where you'll be able to find cat. And basically here, there are a bunch of rewards. The first one is the Disinfestor Gloves, which is 30 Rift Time. Second one is the Vermin Belt, which is 100 Rift Time, but it's just an upgrade to your Leech Belt. Then there's the Rift Ferret, the key to the Infested House Soul, which is this last Enigma Soul over here, and the Fake Neuroscience Degree. So basically what you have to do here is use your vacuum cleaner and you're going to go around and pick up different vermin so there are silverfish there's flies which is what i'm on right now and then there is spiders so it's silverfish are the easiest ones to grab you just look at them and they just take a second flies are a little bit more tricky you kind of have to just trap them for a second and they'll start warping around a little bit and you just got to keep looking at them and then you'll grab them the spiders are also a little bit tricky but you just look at them they warp around a bit you look at them again and you just kind of keep holding on until they let go and then you got to make sure you deposit these into the vermin bin for them to be able to count for cat you can see for the first reward you need four of each second reward you need 15 flies Third reward, you need 20 flies, 10 spiders, 20 silverfish, and it just keeps going up for each one of them. But once you have unlocked the last section, you don't have to do the entire grind again. You can just buy this neuroscience degree twice if you want to. That's what I did. So I could upgrade both my spider and tarantula pet in the main game. The main thing here is the key to the infested house, which you get at level four and that allows you to grab this last Enigma Soul. So for that one, you need 40 Silverfish, which sounds like a lot, it's really not. Silverfish are really easy. Now, another thing you need to just know about this section, there are the Temporal Pillars. So if you walk close to these guys, you will die. So you kind of just want to stay out of the way, and you see I'm not moving at all right now, but Temporal Pillar is pulling me in. So he's got kind of a vacuum for himself, so you want to make sure you stay away from that. But I did say you needed to kill the Shadows earlier. I didn't tell you how they work. So basically, you're going to hit them one, two three times and then they'll go underground you want to make sure you don't get hit while they're underground because they're going to come over and try and hit you with their pillar and if that pillar hits you you lose a whole minute no matter how much rift time you have left you lose a whole minute so it's very much a pain in the butt so try to not get hit by those guys next up we have one of the trickier quests on top of this building right here which is in between cosmos building and the windmill there is going to be a wizard here holding a fireball in place. So you'll talk to him. He's going to give you the warding diamond theme. And he's going to tell you you have to go find different glyphs to be able to help him out. First glyph is going to be down over here. It's just right here sitting on this rock here. So you'll click that and it should give you a special map, which you will bring you back over to the wizard guy here. You'll click on him and he'll tell you that you need to place a glyph for him. So basically there's going to be particles down over here. I think it's on this side of the building or over here. I can't remember. But the first one is the Omega symbol. So you're just going to look across, look up, and you got to be very slow about it. If you try and speed through it, it's not going to count anything. You just look over slowly, make sure you hit all the particles, and then go around. So for this, you will have to have your particles on. It's going to be, it's going to start off as critical particles, and as you look at it, it's going to turn into sharpness particles. So make sure that you have your particles on for this. Then you go back up to them, 
and he's gonna tell you where the second one is. He'll say the second one is in the windmill, so you'll just have to run over here to the windmill. For this, you will have to unlock the Dread Farm area, but it's just a time gate. You don't need a time charm or anything, but it is back here behind the windmill. You'll click here and then you continue. Come back to him, give him the glyph. I'll have a different section for you to do another one of the crit particles to sharpness particles things and you'll just paint that area and then go on to the next one this one can be found over by the water tower right over here so you're just gonna run over and it's gonna be up on this ledge right here so grab it come back and then you'll have another particle thing to do the next one is over in the barn so you're just gonna run over here to the barn and it is in this back corner here it's right in between this wooden post and this wooden post so just click right here and then you can go back and place the next glyph. The next one can be found next to a glutton. So a glutton is somebody who eats a bunch. So that is over here, Mr. McPizza. You run over here, it's gonna be down under the stairs here. You click that and then you can come back and place the next glyph. The next one can be found on top of the infested house's chimney. So you'll just have to do like you did with the parkour race for Gunther earlier and kind of teleport around that jump because I just hate it. And then you can jump over here and it's on top of the chimney right here so you can just grab it after you've placed the glyph for that one the next one is going to be over here inside the cake house now it's going to be on the top floor so unfortunately you do have to eat through this cake you cannot go through the window because the window cakes are made of metal and you can't break them so kind of annoying but it is what it is so you just eat your way through to the top just like we did earlier and then the glyph is going to be up here on the top floor right here on the bed so you can just click right there grab the glyph and go back out after you've done that one the next one requires a lot more work this one is the server room so the server room is over here in guy's special hut that he has you're gonna have to run up the side here and talk to mr cloon you have unhinged cloon basically you're gonna talk to him and he is going to give you this retro encabulating visor so when you wear this it gives negative 50 intelligence so i don't recommend wearing it for that long but you can see all the wires that are coming out of this so before you do the quest all these wires are going to be gray so you're just going to have to run around and try and figure out where they're all at but I can actually tell you where they are. So I do recommend doing them in the order that you see here. The first one is gonna be all the way over in Joey McPizza's house. There is a laptop right here. Now, after you've hacked it, you'll be able to choose the color, but the way that you hack it, you'll have numbers going across the screen, left to right and right to left. You're just gonna have to stop them in the order that you see them. So there'll be your set numbers up here. There'll be a button either on the right side or the left side, and you'll just click that whenever five is right underneath five. But there is a time limit so you gotta be pretty quick with it anyways you will be able to choose the color of the wire afterwards so you're gonna want it to make a rainbow just like Kloon has so you click pink for the first one and then we follow the wires back out and the next one is right in here in the mirrorverse room so you click this one after you've hacked it you set that color to purple. The next ones are over this direction. First one being right here next to Yashua and Skylark. So the first one you'll set to blue. And then the one that you find all the way over here for some reason, there's one here at the water tower. You'll set this one to aqua. The next one, after you follow all these wires all the way back here, you will find it over here by Plumber Joe. Set this one to green. The next one is gonna be down here inside Gunther's house in the basement. He's got grandma and next to her we've got this hacked terminal here so you'll set this one to red the next one is going to be all over here at the infected house right here you'll set it to yellow after you've hacked it and the last one is going to be over here inside the alchemist's building and you'll set it to orange so after you've hacked all those you should see that you've got a nice little rainbow here you'll run all the way up and it should match many clunes skin red orange yellow green aqua blue purple, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, pink. All right, we've got it. After you talk to him, you will get access to the defective monitor, which is pretty nice. An extra minute of rift time and six intelligence goes a long way. But more importantly, you'll gain access to the next glyph, which should be right here on the desk next to him. Claim that and then go back over to the wizard and he will have the last glyph for you to set. So you just set it and then you will be done with that quest and he will unlock the Enigma Soul, which is down here in the basement of this house. You just walk all the way down and the enigma soul is right here now that is going to be everything for this west village section 
besides the Mirrorverse Time Charm. I'm going to go over the Mirrorverse in a whole nother video. But I hope this helped you out. If it did, remember to leave a like and sub if you haven't already. We are getting closer and closer to 5k subs. And while you're at it, you can join the Discord for a chance at 1 billion coins. We are doing a 1 billion coin giveaway. So as long as you go in there and react in the announcements channel, you'll have a chance to win. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. God bless. Thank you.